Hi all, Plant Side Agent here. Today I'm going to show you how I made a alcohol burner in one of these one ounce aluminum uh, tins. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, let's get started. I've seen alcohol burners made out of little round tins. Actually, some of them are sold commercially. I've seen some demos on how to make homemade ones out of the little tins that have lip balm and all kinds of other different things. So Anyway, I found these tins on eBay. You can get them. Oh, I think I bought six of them at once, but you can get as many as 30 and some, at a pretty good price. So I guess if you want to go make these commercially yourself, <laughs> it's not too expensive to get into it. So <clears throat> anyway, it's a good size. Uh, it could fit in, nicely fit inside like one of these fold up um, stoves that kind of use use it as a bit or whatever you want to use it for. And it's just a nice little alcohol burner. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to, how I made one. This will be my second one. And then um, at the end I'll uh, do a burn test on the uh, using that, that little uh, <clears throat> Esbeth stove. So to, uh, all you're going to need are these little tins. Now these are pretty nice. They're aluminum. Light as a feather. I think this, this one comes in at uh, 0.2 ounces or 9 grams. Um, they're they're screw on, which is nice, and also they have they have kind of one of those little cardboardy plastic gaskets a lot of lids have. So I did do a test, and this won't if you put fuel in it and tip it up, it will dribble out. So probably not recommending carrying fuel in this because this doesn't really seal. I guess if you wanted to seal it up like you would with a Trangia. You'd have to go find a, an O-ring or something at the hardware store, which you probably could. I might try to do that next time in the hardware store. I'll take a look. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> the burn time on this, you might as well just burn it all out. So, um, like I said, I will do a burn test at the end. Um, so to get uh, to get started, oh yeah, and these um, these these little tents come in all kinds of sizes. So. This is a this is a one ounce. It'll hold one ounce capacity, which is probably good enough for most of your two cup boiling water tests. If you want a little longer burn time, and I'm thinking of buying some, there's one that's a 1.7, and there's also a two ounce variety. So I might try to make some stoves with those to see how they work out and check on the burn time. So, but anyway, to make one of these, all you really need is, um, of course, the tin, some scissors. Uh, some marking device, um, carbon felt. Uh, you can usually buy this off of eBay at uh, reasonable prices. I got this strip here. <clears throat> and then I also have some stainless steel mesh uh, wire, wire mesh that I use. Actually, this came with a uh, soldering kit that I have, but you can also find this on eBay and, and Amazon if you shop around. So. You probably, this isn't necessary, the, the mesh, but uh, I like it. Some of the other stoves I have similar to it, actually an antique, they do have a mesh over the top. Probably keeps the, uh, the carbon felt material in place. Um, I have seen them made without. So anyway, so let's get started. It's not much to it. It's just basically uh, kind of like grade school craft, just... Uh, marking and cutting things out. So what I did to start with, just to get the size uh, for the inside of it, is uh, just get out here and uh, I'm going to put this on top. Get yourself a marking. I happen to have a silver sharpie for this. If you have some of that, uh, those wax marking things that, uh, that blacksmiths and uh, metal workers use fabricators and seamstress probably work better on this black felt but this is what I have I probably got one of those around but so you want to cut around it and probably stay in as close as you can because you know you want it to fit it you, this is an outside diameter and you want it to fit on the inside so that's the uh, that's the first one this this will take three of these little pads so then you just have to cut it out. <laughs> so craft time. So just cut around this. Oops. 
guess I should be out here where you can watch it. It's kind of pointless for me to watch it. And you just sit there twiddle your thumbs. Yeah, just cut around. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'd like it perfect, but I got a crooked hand so and a crooked eye, so I can never make anything perfect. So I didn't do well in school, you know, coloring inside the line stuff. But anyway, then you just uh, take your pad and put it in the bottom and cut out two more. I'll I'll uh, pause this here and I'll cut out the other two so I, you won't have to suffer through my uh, cutting skills. Okay, I got my two pads, other pads cut out. Oh, one thing I didn't comment. You do, I do cut, I cut around, let's see if I get this in frame here. I do cut around the inside of this mark and then they fit perfect. Because remember, I marked this on the outside of the tin. See, they fit in there pretty good. So you just pop the other two in. There we go. And it just about, it does fill up to just about the top. Just about perfect. So... That's the first phase. I guess you could quit here if that's as far as you wanted to go. Or if you want to get fancy, you can put the mesh on. One thing I did mention, if you can do with the mesh, you're going to have to have some kind of a cutter. Uh, some kind of tin snip of some sort. I have these I bought from Harbor Freight, which is the good cheap tools for the hobbyists that don't use it that often. I'd never use Harbor Freight stuff professionally, but for a home do-it-yourself, they only use it every so often. They're perfect, especially for the price. So the next step, take your metal mesh and uh, get out your old trusty crayon again. Let's go this side here. Make sure this is in, in view. Not that you guys should be able to figure out what's going to happen here. So I, to, I just take another Sharpie, mark around the tin. Okay, there you go. And these are, uh, these came in a set. They're straight left and right hand turns. So when you cut, these tend to want to go around to the right, which just makes a much nicer cut when you're working with uh, sheet metal and that sort of thing. But imagine anything you have would probably work. You'd probably even get by with just regular old uh, wire cutters. But uh, I got these tools, so I use them. So anyway, yeah, then you just get on this and start uh, Cutting around, I think I'm going to just kind of keep oops, going around the uh, thing to cut that out. So, I'm going to, not much to it. As you can see, it doesn't take long, you can knock these out. I guess if you want to make these and sell them on Etsy, you could probably um, make some... Uh, Templates and maybe even a, a cutter or something so you could cut out that carbon felt quicker than just hand cutting it. But you could knock these out pretty quick. Yeah, you're asking me, am I going to make these and sell them on Etsy? No, that's. I'm retired. I'm not working. <laughs> I just do stuff for fun. And thank goodness I don't need the money. So I'll leave that to anybody else that might want to make some money at this. So anyway, there you go. There's your little mesh. And then you just have to make sure I make this one. Oops. Yep. Yeah, I should have cut around the inside. It looks just a hair. Yeah, I think it'll fit. Let's see. And you just have to kind of pop it in. There is a lip on the inside, so it'll it'll settle inside the lip. Yeah, I probably could have made this just a little narrower. Let's trim that down real quick. Like I said, if you make a couple of these, you'll get pretty good at it. This is my second one. You'd think I'd get it figured out, but nope. So anyway, you just have to push that wire mesh down in there. And, oops. There you go. So, it's done. And when it's all complete, it weighs... Uh, 0.4 of an ounce or 14 grams. That's that is nothing. That is nothing. <laughs> so if you're if you're in the lightweight camping, it's going to be hard pressed to get lighter than that. So of course, with this you'll need some kind of a pot stand. So that's going to add some weight. So sometimes these things just kind of all all balance out. So anyway, so that's the stove or the burner. 
So next I'll uh, set up for a uh, boil test and we can see how this burns and how long it takes to boil two cups of water. So I'll go get all that set up and get right back to you. Okay, I got the water prepped. Go ahead and uh, add some uh, alcohol. Now this is a one ounce tin, but it's going to hold a little less than an ounce because obviously you got the mesh and the uh, uh, carbon felt. I probably put more than, oops, got a little carried away and put more than I really needed, but it's in there. Oh, another nice thing about having the, the screw on lid into this also can work as a snuffer. And by the way, if you're going to snuff this out, use the, use the top. That way you don't burn the uh, little gasket on the inside. So anyway, so I've got uh, 16 ounces or two cups of water prepped in this uh, mess tin. And uh, let's put it over here where you can see it. It's at 52 degrees. And uh, so we'll go ahead and light this guy off. And then we'll get the old burn test going. There we go, off we go, put the water on, well, if you're interested I did do a video on this uh, mess tin, a review on it, this tin in the stove, so if you're interested I'll go ahead and put a link to that video in the description section. So oops, better hit the button, stop my yakking. And. So we're off, and I'm going to turn the light off, and then we'll come down and you can take a look and look at the burn pattern on this uh, burner. Okay, there you go. There's the burn pattern. Nice burn. We'll uh, see how long it takes to uh, boil some water here. I was sitting here waiting for the water to boil. Uh, one other note. On... Your carbon felt, I, I said it took three pads, but depending on the thickness of your carbon felt, you know, it could take two to more. So whatever, just fill it up with your little pads until you get just about the, to the bottom of the rim here, and uh, that should do the trick. You could probably use other stuff too. Some some of them use what's called that fire rope. It's that insulation, I think, that goes around the uh, outside of wood stoves and things. Or you might be able to use just uh, good old... Uh, uh, fiberglass insulation. You can play around with it if you're interested. I'm not, <laughs> but you can. So anyway, as you can see, we're in about almost eight minutes of a burn and up to 180 degrees. So go ahead and turn this off till we get a little closer. Okay, getting close. 210, 953. And uh, actually, it got herself a boil here already anyway. So we're almost at the 212 mark. Yeah, come on. Well, we're at 10 minutes, which is, you know, <laughs> I'd call that a rolling boil, even though we're not at, uh, there it is, at 212 degrees. So we'll just say it hit 212 at uh, 1015. So mark that down. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this run out to see how long uh, my one ounce of fuel will burn. So I imagine it's probably about the same as all. <laughs> One ounce of it's going to burn probably about the same for just about every burner. But anyway, uh, as we get as soon as it gets close to being run out, then I'll I'll get back to you. Okay, stove starting to run down though. Although we've been over 16 minutes and uh, the water was still boiling away, so this little thing will crank it out. Let's pull this off. Well, I won't be able to see it and don't have a lights on it's just barely going I would say that uh, still got a little heat out of there but for all intents and purposes it's done let's just say it's 17 minutes like I said if you do want to snuff this before you have to finish boiling your water use the uh, the bottom and just put the top on done so uh, let's see so as you can see this uh, little burner works great Lightweight, easy, easy to make. Uh, they say that it boiled in uh, 10 minutes and 15 seconds, two cups of water, and it ran out at about 17. So that's probably plenty to do most of your cooking needs. So, um, and uh, just as a note, uh, 
I am going to make a, or I did already, but I'll, I'll probably do a demo. I made a, a little cook set or stove set for this uh, for this uh, burner out of an Altoid tin. I'll probably be uh, making that video in the next few days, so you might keep an eye open for it. But it all fit inside the uh, Altoid tin, and you got yourself a nice lightweight, small, compact little uh, stove kick. And I'll go ahead and do a burn test and all that rot on that little stove when I uh, do the video on it. So anyway, I think that's about all I can say on this for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.